Hey guys, just wanted to do my review of Legends of Tomorrow season two, season two, episodes nine and ten, Raiders of the Lost Art and Legion of Doom, respectively. Um, so this is probably I have to say right off the bat, these are probably two of my favorite episodes of the ser of the probably the series. Um, especially Legion of Doom, which is a more focuses more on the the titular characters of. Um, Malcolm Merlin, Damian Dark, and Eobard Thawne, there are the kind of more the take it more like the main story and the, um, the lip, they have like more like um, screen time than the Legends in, in the latter episode. The former episode the Legion tracks um, Rip Hunter somehow to to Hollywood in 1967 and Malcolm and Dark are Basically, stab um, some bikers and take their stab, stab some bikers and steal their bikes, and it creates enough of a type of aberration to alert the legends. And it turns out when um, this nice little joke when Rip is filming his movie about his own life, un, you know, unknowingly. And they start making a joke about the Vandal Savage character, you know, not being, not having any menace, and the actor can't bring any menace to the part, which it, this is the part, which is kind of like an acknowledgement to the poor reception that Vandal Savage got last season. And this is probably it feels bad for the actor because it feels like it's a bit, of, it's a bit of a burn towards him. But at the same time, it it was he really wasn't. I genuinely wanted to like that character more than I did and he just just didn't have just didn't click for me and I, I'm kind of with the majority on how they felt about Savage Vandal Savage but then he, but then they also get the same joke same um in that same scene he Merlin and Dark approach um Rip Hunter who, th who has amnesia and thinks he's a film critic named Phil Kazmar and he's actually working with George Lucas as cameraman and they just talk about uh, but like, oh yeah, these guys have some menace. These guys are good, and the legends come to his rest, come to Rip's aid, looking because they already figured because they already started to put the pieces together and realized that the two um, amulets were a medallion, and Jax knew about the legend of this, knew about the Spear of Destiny, and they tells him how it's the power to rewrite reality, which is, makes it different from time travel because the changes are permanent. And Sarah felt Sarah still felt guilty for giving Merlin the amulet, even if it, even if it was to exchange it for um, Stein's life. But anyway, th there's a huge battle that ensues. Um, George Lucas gets hit by um, one of the late one of the laser guns from I think it was either Merlin or Dark, and it scares him into quitting film school. And in the whole ambush, also both. Both parties have to flee, and Rip ends up getting arrested for some. I don't know what actually, but um, base, but uh, they have a uh, Sarah, Sarah Martin, and Mick. I, th I think Mick. I think they go to pretend that they're doctors who have to um have to remove. Have to move Phil from the police station, and the, with, and of course Merlin and Dark follow them there, and but they're able to escape, and they realize it's not time drifting that's causing Rip's amnesia. He he turns out that in flashbacks to the season premiere, in order to hide a piece of this, he took a piece of the spear from Destiny, um, from his um study. He didn't tell Gideon what he what it was before shutting it shutting down the wave, shutting her down. And he used the time drive to basically lobotomize himself and transport him to, to time, and time scatter himself to 1967. Um, but all, but but another problem is that because George Lucas quit film school, you find out that Ray was inspired to go into to go into his field his field of work because he saw Star Wars, and Nate was inspired to become a historian because he saw Raiders of the Lost Ark and the Indiana Jones films. Without those films in the world, they lose their knowledge and expertise, and they can't help the team because in an alternate timeline, George went on to sell insurance, and 
it turns out that Ray and Nate become a heart surgeon and a yoga instructor, respectively. And it's just kind of funny how they just go up to George Lucas when he's like leaving and throwing his props and stuff out of the trash from the student film he was working on with Rip. That they just tell him it's like we're from the future. They just don't even try to come up with the light. We're from the future. We need you to get our powers back. Blah blah blah. And there was a nice little nod where um, Amaya just tells him, give throws throws out the line like, "Your movies changed the world. You're our only hope." But then they get ki- ambushed and kidnapped by Damien Dark and Merlin, and Lucas reveals that he he just thought the piece of the Spear of Destiny was a prop, so he threw it in the trash. So they, so, they had, so they take him to the junkyard, they throw him to a trash compactor, they activate it in order to um, motivate them to find it faster, even though Lucas found it, and Ray, Nate, and Amaya to convince them not to give it to him, give it to them, but, and they also have, like, putting, like, barriers to try to stop the um, compactor from crushing them, and just basically reenacting that compactor scene from A New Hope, and... Ray and Nate convince Lucas that he has to believe he has to believe that he wants to direct and that that's what he wants that that's what his passion is that's what he really wants to do and it eventually and Nate and Ray get their powers back and their knowledge back and they're able to level they're able to help and with the assistance of and also they have like Stein and Sarah and Jax come to Sarah and Jax come to their aid, and there's a funny thing where they're, like they're walking past um, uh, Stein and Stein operating on Mick because he thinks that he's suffering from hallucinations and it's, it's the cause of a chip that they put, that the Time Masters put in his head from when he was Kronos and they're and they both walk past him going what are you doing and he just goes brain surgery it's brain surgery what does it look like. And they're just kind of just, like, bewildered and just like, okay, just fuck it, whatever, we're out of here. And there's this huge battle that ensues between both teams, and Sarah's able to get the piece of the spear and the medallion, but then Reverse Flash shows up as a, and kind of, like, knocks all the legends to their feet. And and then, of course, Rip, who was already... Or, who was, on the ship saying that he doesn't have any powers what can I do and Gideon says that that he always, he always relies on his courage and determination to get them out of a situation and you first at first you think like oh Rip's got his memories back and he's, he, has, he, has, he has on his own trench coat and his gun and he's about to fire at the Legion but it turns out he's grabbed a prop gun by accident and it turns out that he was faking the whole time. He still thinks he's Phil, and then he just. But then he's able to decloak the Wave Rider and tell him to fire their lasers, to just to not to distract the Legion and allow the Legends to escape. But Thawne's able to grab um, Rip and all the chaos, and Sarah is pissed that they were forced to leave. Um, they were forced to leave him behind, and they lost Rip again, but Jax gives him some encouragement, saying that you can't beat yourself up over this, and that he knows her well enough to know that that when you set your mind to something, there's no stopping you There's no stopping you until you get what you want. And it also leads into, which leads right into the following episode, in which you find out in the flashback that Merlin and Dark had, sorry, Mer, sorry, thought, Thawne and Dark had recruited Merlin. They traveled back. In, they traveled to Genesis Day, the events of the season four finale of Arrow, in which they, in which Merlin was just at an, at his apartment, just finished watching the news of Green Arrow killing Dark, and they're the ones, and that's and that's why he hasn't been seen on. Arrow since season, since last season, and then they're the ones that came with, come with him to the proposition about joining them on their crusade, and basically you just kind of realize how they're really not working well together because basically I mean they're super villains they're all used to being in charge and like calling the shots on their own respective shows and seasons, and basically Thawne is but Thawne's the ones kind of calling the shots and Merlin and Dawn are being Merlin and, and Dark are being treated like henchmen. Especially, and they're getting kind of sick of it and just being bullied and belittled by Thawne. 
So Malco tries to hypnotize um, Rip, realizing that he lost his memories. It doesn't work. Then Dark just tries straight up torture, and he rips out Rip's tooth. And one of the, and one of it has like like a barcode or like information on it to a bank in Switzerland, Zurich, Switzerland. And so. Merlin wants to go for finesse and subtlety, as opposed to Dark just wants to, you know, just kill everybody and raid the place. But M M Malcolm insists they go with his plan by forcing Rip to go to the bank, travel to the bank in 2025, um, and get and you know get access to the bank vault because they figured inside the deposit box is the rest of the spear. But the only, but the problem is that they only have, they have like the code and retinal scan, but they don't have voice recognition, and so they have to like shoot their way out and abandon the plan. And while they're waiting, Mer Merlin's the one that tells Dark, you know, why the time traveler needs guys like us to help him and it help him get the spear. Like he can do this all by himself, and it's like Mer, you know. Thon's hiding something, don't you want to know what it is, and he's able to convince Dark to maybe to, be, to become suspicious as well, but that, but of course because of their constant snarking about their failures in the past, or um, them getting into a sword fight league style in terms of trying to settle their differences, but then rips the one that convinces them that Thon's the one that's behind their strife, and that they need to work together in order to like put him in his place, and so they go back to the bank vault. They sh Dark decides to like kill everybody in the bank, and Mal Merlin has tortured the override code of the vault to in order to get inside, and they uh, and they find a mnemonic device, as explained by Thon, but they decide to set a trap for Thon and lock him in the bank vault. <clears throat> And when his beep and when his watch starts going off, which keeps going off periodically, um, it turns out. And my initial fan theory was that, oh, he was just run, he was on the run from. He didn't want to kill Amaya in the mid-season finale because it would have caused a paradox. It turns out he's running from lo and behold the Black Flash, who on in the Arrowverse is basically and now a Grim Reaper speedster. He was always a Grim Reaper speedster in the comics, but now he's. But on this show, he's also the um, zombified version of Hunter Zolom and Zoom from season two of The Flash. And more or less appears exactly the way he did before he was morphed into the Black Flash um, in the season two finale. All except for, I mean, I think the special effects team messed up because his... his ch Chest and Signia should have like a white background instead of just black or whatever. Um, and so Thawne realizes he that Merlin Dark has caught him by the balls and his beeper is going off because it's, it alerts him to the Black Flash's presence and then he's forced to confess what's going on. How Eddie Thawne killed himself in, or, in, in an effort to erase him from existence, but then Barry pulled him for the timeline, creating Flashpoint, and then when he got loose and left him on the porch in the season three premiere, it turns out that he was running from the Black Flash and the not being able to keep not because he can sense the Speed Force and he wants to finish the job and make sure he he get he's not supposed to, because Thon's a time remnant he's not supposed to exist so he's been sent by the I guess the time race to basically make sure they get rid of him once and for all. And, um, they find, and so they, and so Malcolm and D Damien agree to help Thawne as long, save him, save his life, as long as he stops treating them like crap, which he decides to agree, and they're in, like, they're walking around outside the vault, and he's, the Black Flash that kind of speeds in and just starts, like, zipping around him, and this is, like, the most petrified I've seen ever. Either version of Eobard Thawne, whether it's Matt Lester's or Tom Cavanaugh's version, and he's kind of like sniffing around like a velociraptor, and it kind of reminds me of that scene in Jurassic Park. And it also have the same Jurassic Park dynamic where it's like Black Flash of the T Rex, 
Um, Thawne is the victim who has to like stand still or else he's going to die or get eaten. And when the Black Flash is like right up in Thawne's face, th um, Mer Malcolm and Thawne, sorry, Mal Malcolm and Damien distract him by throwing, by firing a arrow and throwing a sword at him respectively. And then Thawne uses super, is able to punch him with some, he's at super strength inexplicably throughout this series. I never got how or why. But he uses super strength to like punch um, the Black Flash into the vault, and they all trap him in there. And so, and Thon said they don't have much time, but it's time to escape as partners. And the subplot they had for um, the uh, for the Legends and Legion of Doom episode was basically how they had to identify the Speedster, and they wanted to have somehow hook up the medallion to the ship's seat. The, the Gideon the, and the ship's um, computer, the rest of the ship's computer system, were to find the rest of the pieces of the spear. But um, but they need somebody to help them with that, and so they go back to Central City, 2017, and nobody like I get I get it. Grant Gustin's like number one on the call sheet, for being the title character on his own show. But at least you could have had like somebody like try to contact him and fail or like text him a picture of the little collage they had of all the speedsters in the Arrowverse that they that the crew knew of to him and, and say like hey this is everybody we know about dead alive or an ally like are there is there anybody we're leaving out it never dawns on anybody to do that or at least like address that address that little plot hole um so anyway, Stein went back to twenty to Central City because he wanted to go pick up Lily and bring him onto the wave bring her onto the wave rider and create a device that would allow to help them hook up the medallion to the ship. But then every as everybody on the ship predicted, and Mick being a dick about it, um it turns out that he just basically just tells um, Lily that she's a time aberration when they're really eating the synthetic food and, when he, and makes an offhand comment saying, oh, fake person, fake food. And so she takes it, and she's kind of devastated when she realizes that she's, she finds herself a mistake and, and that she was a creation, and that she was created from a time alteration, but Jack's convinced, convinced his sign to have a heart to heart with her, to her, with Lily, and you learn that Stein never wanted kids. The first time was because his own dad treated like hit him like crap, and he didn't want to be his father's son and treat his own ki and treat his own kids like crap. And but Jax can, is able to convince Stein to have a heart to heart with Lily, and they reconcile. And while and when Stein walks into the room, um, trying to figure out who the speedster is, and they realize that they can't identify the speedster because he's not technically supposed to exist that causes a and that he's been that he technically doesn't exist and erased himself from existence that kind of has like a light bulb go off in um stein's in stein's mind and he he realizes that they're dealing with e barthon and he explains like who he is and the circumstances behind his death I mean, they think like they, they think that he's after the spear because he doesn't want like because he wants to avoid the delayed ripple effect of getting erased from existence when it's really just, which is, in it's true in a sense, but they don't. Of course, they don't realize that you know the Black Flash is there to just make sure he gets wiped out from existence personally. But I'm glad that it's like they finally figured out like who and what they're dealing with because I just kind of felt like it was just like pointless drama where it's just like Stein was never in. The, never in the same company with the team when they were trying to figure out who this speedster was and weren't able to put two and two together and now I'm just glad that it's finally done and it's like but the, my maybe my biggest gripe with it at, out of all of it is that we're more than halfway into the season and it's still we still have not seen Captain Cold and I feel like it's going to be one I, at this rate I feel like it's going to be one of these like is this gonna be like when Mark Guggenheim like overhyped the shit out of um, Jewel State being on the show, and not only was she only in two scenes in her episode, episode she guest starred in, but 
it ended up being the show's wor- like the the worst episode of that season. So at this rate, it it seems like we're not going to see um, Captain Cold until maybe like the second, maybe to like the penultimate episode of this season, which is kind of disappointing, especially since they over- hyped up his appearance so much. But probably the biggest twist of the end of the episode is is when um, they get the mnemonic device and return Rip's memories, but Thawne decides to make some altercations in which, and the scene ends with him in in New Jersey in 1776, and he walks into a tent and basically shoots George Wash and kills George Washington. And now it's going to be interesting to see, like, okay, maybe it's going to be a fight. Now it's going to be, like, Maybe Rip and Captain Cold are going to be like members of the Legion of Doom now because he's been apparently brainwashed and it's it's it's. I mean, I never liked Rip Hunter. I always felt like he was kind of a drag last year, and he, he and him being gone allowed the team to grow and develop and have a good rapport. Then better than last year, I feel like bringing him back to the team would just kind of like undo all that. And I guess like the writers sort of have acknowledged that, which is pretty much why, you know, he's been either ki- been kidnapped to being, like, a brainwashed member of the Legion of Doom, it's, and I'm kind of happy to see where this goes, and, you know, th- this season, I feel like this has been probably, like, the strong, arguably one of the, the strongest, it's neck and neck with Supergirls, like, the strongest of the CW shows right now, but, um, hey, what do you guys think of the the Legion of Doom and Raiders of the Lost Art. Um, leave your, which episodes do you like better? Do you leave your thoughts in the comments down below. If you like this video, like, share, and subscribe, and I will talk to you guys soon. Take care.